Uh, hello, this is Rodney A. Brooks, and welcome to RodneyABrooks.com. Today we're talking to my good friend, Deborah Owens. It's so good to be here. And Deborah has written a new book called Wealth Secrets, A Woman's Guide to Own and Secure Your Financial Future. So tell us about the book, Deborah. Well, you know what I love about this book is unlike my other books where I used examples of women that I had helped in the past, this book is really a culmination of the women that have been through our coaching programs and seeing what their transformation has been. And what had become really clear, because most of what I had done in the past was more uh, you know, brand ambassador, public speaker, you know, motivational. And in 2015, uh, we launched Wealthy You with the focus of actually providing coaching, curriculum, and accountability. And I've learned so much, uh, Rodney, but what I, what I, the thing that I learned that I was really uh, surprised about is that there are secrets that people don't know, <laughs> you know? And so as I began to coach people and help them evaluate their investments, they were in investments that weren't appropriate for them, but not in from the standpoint of being aggressive, but really being too conservative. And uh, so in the book, I really wanted to share what some of the secrets are to women being successful uh, in, you know, achieving financial independence, because that's what it's about. Now, women are more conservative than men when it comes to investing, right? Is that true? I would say they are, <laughs> but I would say that that is directly connected to a lack of knowledge. And so what happens is once they gain knowledge, they become more confident and ergo more aggressive, more comfortable being aggressive. So, okay, so when you, um, when you do your coaching at Wealthy You, um, what, you know, what, what, um, what do you find that, that surprises you the most, I just say about what, because I assume most of your clients are women. That's right. Uh, that they don't know and um, and tell me, and give me an example of somebody that, uh, one of your success stories. I'm oh, sure man, you, sure I get, many there are many in the yes. book, too. <laughs> I mean, every chapter really exposes one of the secrets and how they used it, right, to transform their finances. So one in particular uh, that, that uh, strikes me is Tamika, a journalist. And when I met Tamika, she was actually referred uh, to a friend, a friend that we both know, Nikki, and uh, she she knew that it was time. Like she knew that she wanted to experience some kind of financial independence. And you know, journalism can be fraught with uh, contracts, and you know, not necessarily knowing, you know, if somebody's going to renew your contract. So, long story short, she had a lot of debt. Uh, but knew that if she focused, and also a byproduct of, of what we do in Wealthy You is, you know, the first thing I tell people, listen, you, you can either focus, there's only so much you can cut, right? Like, you got to earn more money. And the great story, Tamika's story, is not only did she double her income and land a fabulous position right here in Washington, D.C., but she also hit six figures in her retirement plan in a very short period of time. Now, what didn't she know? She didn't know what she didn't know. And uh, you know, basically what she was able to do is I call them investment opportunity levers, and they're different for everybody, right? So you may have a retirement plan at work you can take advantage of. You might be self-employed and able to establish an SEP IRA. You may be able to do both, right? And so a culmination of really... Uh, looking at what you have and then leveraging it, and that's really the key, leverage. I don't think we talk about that enough, Rodney, but that's an example in the book that, that I can think of. Okay, so in a minute I want to talk about some of the secrets, <laughs> some of the secrets in your book. But, but let's, talk, let's talk first about, about women in finance at different life stages now. Okay, um, and 
Um, so let's talk about, you know, pre, pre, pre um, wedding, pre, you know, pre marriage, oh. um, after young, young married, um, and, and you know, at some point, you know, you're you're married, but you still need to, you still had need to have a certain amount of financial knowledge, um, just in case, and and then as you get older and prepare for retirement. So yeah, so I'll say one of the common mistakes women make, mm -hmm. especially earlier, if they're just starting a family, is the goal typically is let's get enough money, let's buy a house, let's buy a better house, let's get in a better school district. So that's sort of where you're focused at uh, as a woman. And so one of the common mistakes they make is not contributing to their 401k plan or sometimes being in their child rearing years and coming out of the workforce, not contributing to anything. And you know, quite often, one of the great advantages that they have is there's always a spousal IRA, even if you're not working. So I think when you're looking at a household budget and maybe it's one income, you begin to think, well, I need every dime. But the key is just to do something consistently, right? So earlier on, what I like to tell young women is, listen, uh, I certainly was there, but if it's just an extra couple of hundred dollars a month that you continue to put towards your future, that can be a game changer. Okay. So what, what advice for, for, uh, for a millennial, um, whether they're unmarried or, or married? Well, I have two of those. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, they, they say, oh, you know, I was weaned on financial literacy, right? Because I used to drag them to book signings and, you know, you know, NABJ conferences. Uh, and as millennials, I think that sometimes they can be under earning. And so they feel like, hey, I got to make more money. I think that's a common mistake. And the truth is, and, and this is going to sound counterintuitive, but you shouldn't really just focus on income. You should focus on t turning just whatever income you have into wealth, even if it's a small amount. And so for millennials, what I would say are a couple of things. You know, you look at retirement plans, they're saying, I'm not going to be able to get to that money until after I'm 59 and a half. Well, there are some benefits because you could put it in a 401k, and one of the few things you can take that money out and not be penalized is your first time home, right? You could open up a Roth IRA even, and after five years, you can take the principal that you've put into it and use it toward an investment. So I, what I say to, to millennials is, again, just start. Uh, at least invest up to the amount your employer will match uh, if that's all you can afford to do. Okay, and let's go to the other end of the spectrum. Okay, um, because we know... <laughs> that there are a lot of issues faced by black women as they age. Financial is one of the major ones, but health is another one. And, you know, and, you're not just, and loneliness is, you know, being alone is another one. But, but uh, you know, many are not. So you're 50 years old and, you know, your kid is out of college and you're a single black woman now and you have saved nothing. That's what's why your, I built Wealthy your, You. What's your That's advice? exactly <laughs> why I built Wealthy You. Because, you know, one of the things I like to do is give women permission to fill their cup. So often, I think an error that black women make is they take care of everyone and they leave themselves last. And the reason I uh, came on, got on this path myself was because of my own mother, who had been married to my father for several years and then found herself separated with very meager income and very little retirement savings. And, you know, looking at her, uh, certainly I didn't want her to suffer, but what I learned is that my mother is the rule, not the exception, to the point that you're making now. So uh, I really want to give women, I want to encourage them and inspire them that it's not hard, but it's not easy. And the key is to get started. And we have women in Wealthy You who basically, it took them 25 years to get to save 100000 And with just a few years, they've doubled and tripled that. And so much of the wealth gap, Rodney, is not just uh, uh, women under earning, black women specifically. I just saw a number where uh, black women earn on average, you know, 10 
$30,000 or less a year. And so over time, that really adds up, right? But I, I guess the point that I want to make for black women is that the, the, one of the errors we make, because we're not sophisticated, and the truth is, in this industry, if you don't have assets of a million dollars or more, and you know this being a, a planner yourself, is that many you're shied away. You don't get access to this information. So that's one of the reasons that so many women and women of color specifically don't have as much assets as they should is because they are risk averse. And so they don't say, as soon as someone says, you won't lose your money if you put your money in here, you know, whether it's a fixed annuity or whatever, what all, that also means is that your money's not gonna grow. And uh, that's one of the common mistakes I think uh, women make. And that's what wealthy you is, you know, like women are wired to be good investors.